All right, here we are. New topic. I should write that as part three, but what is spirituality? Part three, feeling disenchanted. That's, that's one of the topics. And compassion. So what is our new drawing that we got? Multiple hearts, tender kindness, having heart, love. We must remember compassion. That's one of the biggest topics for today is remembering compassion. So I wrote several note topics to, you know, um, well, here they are. I wrote several note topics on this uh, thing here. So let's take a look at these notes. Let's take a look at these notes. So we're going to start with compassion first. So compassion, what is compassion? It's far greater than empathy. So you'll go through your life, you'll go through elementary school, high school, all these grades, and you can learn from the youngest years how great compassion is compared to empathy. It's phenomenal. And most people in the world use I mean, no, most people in the world do not use compassion or even have compassion. They don't, they don't, you know, a lot of people don't. They actually don't have it. And there were times when I haven't used it, but I do have it. There were times I don't use it. But there are people, it just seem like they absolutely just don't have it at all. You know. Um, and another thing I took note of was the fact that it could be because they have to work and other stresses, right? Which then leads them asking what is in it for me so you have a world where most people think about themselves even in places like you know india where you know um even in places like any where they may have eastern thought and they have a different take on spirituality where they're more likely to teach uh compassion and the all loving thing in a different fashion You'll still have a lot of the commoners over there, at least from the stories I've gotten from what I've seen in YouTube videos. Lots of manipulation happened over there. So different countries, that would include Europe, other places, maybe even places in South America, they may bash the United States, but they're no better. Not a single country in the world, when it comes to compassion, is better than another country. There's plenty of manipulation that happens in the United States. Just take a look at the government. Just take a look at the government, you know. Some of the stuff they say are lies, you know, so every part of the world, we weren't, I wasn't putting India on the spot because remember the Nigerian prince, what he did with that uh, email that one time, uh, I guess he targeted certain Americans, rich Americans, told them, oh, you're a part of this lineage and all that stuff. The entire world doesn't truly know what compassion is. They don't. They don't know what compassion is. Like, few people around the world know what that is. That's few people. America is a culprit. India is a culprit. China is a culprit. Every country in the world is a culprit. Every single one is a culprit. For having a ton of people that don't know what that is. Compassion. And this leads some people into living into forests. This leads some people uh, just wanting to social distance. Because they don't trust other people. They don't they don't see the purpose of having uh, connections because deep filled connections are rare. They are very rare. Most people don't care. Just like a certain someone that I was speaking to yesterday that I, that I told this person, I don't mind being a friend, but this person, you know, um, I told this person uh, recently this morning, I'm getting ready to work on a video lecture. What this person has shown was... Um, ill-mannered respect for someone's time and you know these may be the kind of people i don't know for sure uh whether or not they actually care that you're actually doing something so what the person said in a text was something like oh you're doing too much you got to give me a chance to talk first right but i've been doing this before i've known you you know i've all, I always have something planned to do i always have something planned to do so i can't necessarily say the person is bad at compassion but you got to understand, you can't always think about yourself because when you wanted to talk to me, obviously you were only thinking about yourself. And nine out of 10, when I, when, when I talk on that phone, when I talk on that phone, how much do I want to bet that person is, is, is going to make everything about, about, about himself, right? I only have one good friend. I'm not going to say what his name is, but this is a completely different person. One good friend. He cares about who I am, what I'm about, and he enjoys these videos. 
I would consider that a best friend. We hang out sometimes. We talk sometimes. We, I've, you know, I've um, basically, um, what did I do? What else did I do? Pretty much confided into him a lot of, you know, some of the things that I feel. And he shared a lot of what he felt with me. And we pretty much have a, you know, a strong connection. We have a very strong connection. It's, to me, I feel like it's, it's a deep connected relationship deeply connected relationship like this is actually a lot more than what i've gotten from other people that pretend to be friends women and men alike women too so there was a time i was you know talking to a woman and it was it was one of those things where it was more than just a friendship kind of thing too and she's a heartbreaker so she was the kind of person that made everything about herself, but she had a situation where I, where I decided to turn around and have compassion. I can understand why she was a lot of the way, the way she's the way she, that she was um, throughout the encounter. And, and I met this person at work. So I find it interesting. A lot of people say, oh, that's stuff like that is why I would never date somebody at work. I can understand that there, there are there. There's maybe that one rare person that you meet at work that you could date. So that, that one work friend, that other person, I told him, you know what? Outside of her, you are also dating material, but she was no longer dating material for sure. So basically just outed myself as a bisexual, right? <laughs> I find both sides attractive, you know, or should I say very few people out of both sexes are attractive people. So on, on the soul level, on the soul level, you know, I'm not talking about physical attraction. I'm talking about... When, when, when you get invested, you know, um, in an encounter dealing with a person, when you get invested in that relationship or wanting to spend time with that person, stuff like that is important to me. So on the soul level, these two were, were the most important people, you know, because I thought about them a lot. Um, and apparently he cares a lot about myself also because he always tells me, you know, I think a lot about you. And, you know, that, you know, it, it takes a while for people to grow on you, but I, I, I let that time grow on me. And there's a reason why we take forever having some people grow on us, because if you speed it up, you're, you're, you're never going to get the good bits. And if you don't get the good bits, maybe sometimes... It, 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 it had to run away because you might not have been honoring the fact that there could be good bits or it's just not for you because you were rushing it and you don't deserve to see it. Or let's just say if they're rushing it, there's no good bits to them. But that's not the case with this one person that I consider my best friend. I don't know about this other person that, that you know, that we met recently, but there's another guy um, at the job that he liked the same a uh, person that I like. So at the time I told him, you know what, I only like this side. Although I don't see I don't see anything wrong with talking to both sides. I'm just, you're just not gonna tell him that because that he's the kind of he would get so excited. You know, he he put something in the text. <laughs> we put something in the text like um like imagine if I said I don't see you that way. The person he put something in the text, oh I need somebody to cuddle with. Dude, you're 51 talking like that. You're 51 years old talking like that. <laughs> That's a problem. That's a problem. My own father is like, what, seven years older than you? At least he'll be 58 this year. He's 57 right now. I don't think he talks like that to females. I don't think so. I think I think he knows how to be charming in a way where it's not overbearing. So... And that doesn't necessarily mean I will always be interested in dating somebody those ages anyway. Like, I don't know why people would assume that. You know, if, if you do date somebody around that age, they got to have a lot to their interior. And I'm not going to say that he doesn't. But one thing I will say for sure is that um, one thing I'm going to say for sure is that although he may have complained about a lot of the other co-workers, he says, oh, a lot of people don't know how to hold down a conversation. But... No offense, but you talk a lot about what goes on on the job, though. That's the crazy part. You talk a lot about what goes on on the job. And a lot of what I'm talking about right now has a lot to do with this. How are you spiritually? You're talking a lot about what's on the job, and, 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 and it's never 100% positive either. I may 
have spent some time talking about some of the things that happened there because I'm not going to be mean and say we can't have this discussion. But, you know, one thing I'm not interested in doing is talking about the job a lot. You know, I'm not I'm not interested in talking about that a lot. Not interested in talking about the job all the time. And, you know, we could talk about that one person that broke everybody's heart. Sure. That, 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 you know, you got to cope. You got to find a way to cope. And it's okay to talk about that. But to talk about the drama on the job stuff that doesn't really impact us too much when we get off the job. It's, really, it's not really not worth a discussion. It's really not worth a discussion. And what were some other things that were spoken about? Um, he has a tendency to talk about several other people. A lot of other people. And I'm thinking, you know what, that's fine, but we can't do that all the time. So then, you know, the person may get around to asking, how are you doing? Then the person will turn around and say something like, oh, I need somebody to cuddle with. But then you were trying to make plays on people at the job, right? So at the time, I was interested in another person. I was interested in another person. That's why I went and spoke to her. You know? <laughs> so I went to, and I even told you, you know what, the same person you like, I like. At that time. That's what I said. So, what does that have to do with this discussion? That's actually one of my last points. Um, relationships. Relationships. How does what, what, what is spirituality in your relationships? Well, remember, spirituality is life, right? So, what is life like inside of relationships? The comers and the goers. Um, I don't think he realized that I was the goer in his life. And... You know, I don't think he realized I'm trying to leave. I would try to avoid that person. I actually left that job. Sometimes when people leave, you're not losing anything. I didn't give you anything for you to lose. I didn't give you anything. Right. And when people leave my life, the same rule applies. If I don't miss you, it's because, although he tells me that he misses me, I'm thinking, dude, what much have I offered you for you to miss me? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't reveal much to you for you to miss me at all. I didn't reveal much. So technically you lost nothing. Technically you lost nothing, right? <laughs> so you're in bad spirits, right? Remember spirits, good spirits, bad spirits. You're in bad spirits because maybe the play you made on somebody didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I'm not trying to say this to be mean or be harsh. We're just saying this because it's reality. And I'm not trying to, you know, some people say, are you saying certain things for effect? If I was saying something for effect, you would think I would be trying to charge at you in your face and try to say something just to have an impact on you. I'm saying this in the calmest manner possible. I'm saying this in the calmest manner possible. These are my feelings. These are my thoughts. So... And like I said, relationships. So how does this impact myself or how would this impact you? The comers and the goers. Just remember that when they leave, you don't lose anything. Some people will get emotionally attached to some people, maybe over a few words or maybe over this or over that. But what did you actually lose there? You didn't really lose anything. And then, of course, there's the best friend in your life. Sometimes you may just have one or two. Sometimes you just may have one or two. And that person has compassion where you're concerned. That's why they're your best friend. Or should I say, in some cases, maybe it's just empathy. That em empathy is okay. Remember when I said in the beginning of this video, compassion is greater than empathy. But then later down in the notes, empathy is just when you can relate to someone you like. Or someone like you, right? Sometimes this is optimal. It is. There's not, I would never say that compassion is greater than empathy to only turn around and say that you should never utilize empathy. Because they're almost one and the same thing. It's just that compassion is on a level higher than empathy. It's on a level higher. Empathy is selective. Compassion is more like all loving or all nurturing. Like you basically are able to have empathy for most people or almost everybody or, or, or everybody. And then I can see why you can't. You know, you can show compassion for, I will say show compassion for everybody that's innocent. A person that loves wickedness, how do you have compassion for that? I can't. Somebody makes mistakes in their life, and let's say that person was naive. When we say have compassion, we mean don't go bashing that person. You're putting them in bad spirits. You're putting them in bad spirits. Don't go bashing that person when they make a mistake. 
Let's say they mess up on a business venture or something. They're learning. Let's say they're in their early 20s. They're allowed to make those mistakes. They're young. So have compassion. And you're, and you're, and you're like, what, 67 uh, bashing that person? But have you started a business? You might want to try having compassion on yourself first, trying to figure out why you didn't do something. You know? Have you done something like that? And, and it all goes back to the fact that when, when they don't have compassion, it could be that they have to work in other stresses. Remember, we talked about that in this video. So because some of these people had to work their entire life, they can't have compassion for people that try to be their own person or try, try to be. I'm not saying that you're hardly your own person if you're working for somebody else. You made the choice to go to work. That's what you told yourself. That's what you told yourself. So the part where I add, what, what, well, what's in it for me, right? That Remember what I said before, when they have to work in other stresses, why they can't have compassion? And sometimes when someone asks for help, they may ask, what's in it for me? They're, they're, they're looking for something in return. Sometimes persons just want you to give them some information. That's all. They're not looking for anything physical. Some people will look at you and say, oh, you looking for something. It might be that the person is looking for information. Maybe, maybe they're lost on something. And, and a lot of times you think you may have intuition about that person. You actually don't. You're judging from the few people you've seen and calling that intuition because people are different and, and different next to the woods. I don't make assumptions everywhere I go. Every, every encounter, I always treat like a new encounter. But any intuition I do have will use that in that particular encounter. So if they, if they, try, to, so if they try to use something against you that you know is hazardous, you don't... You, you don't um, yeah, you just don't go down that road. They tell you, oh, would you like to come in my apartment? Of course I'm not going to come in your apartment. I don't know you. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. You're a stranger, dude. You're a stranger, dude. I could die. <laughs> the, the type of people, when I say they try to use low-grade intuition against someone is when a person's, you know, sometimes people are shy and they come off a certain way and you're thinking they're just looking to get something out of you that 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 that's that's actually you not knowing people as well as you think you do there's a lot of people out there that don't know people that well that actually that's actually a reflection of your lack of understanding of other people not so much the other people so once again that that comes down to compassion and your ability to leave other people into good spirits because everything you do surrounding another person adds to this thing called spirituality. If we're all spirits and we're living on this earth and we get into this thing called spirituality and all that stuff. Um, yeah, if we're getting into all these things called spirituality and all that craziness, wouldn't it make sense to leave people in good spirits rather than negative spirits? Because that will still be spirituality, just negative. So spirituality, remember I said, is not always when you go to a church and we're and worshiping a being up in the clouds, which happens to not actually be a single being up in the clouds. Honestly, I believe we're all segments of a, of, of, of a whole, which we could call source and you could call that God if you want to. I think that's possible. But I don't believe that there is something separate that you worship. I don't believe that. No. So, yet we live separate lives and we have separate goals. So, technically, we are both separate and together. We, we, we Together, humans live on earth, but we're also separate. Anything I do, I go to jail for. Why would you go to jail for anything I do, right? You, you got my DNA. You got my fingerprints. You got my hair, uh, you got my hair pieces that, that shed it. Okay, any saliva, saliva, I said saliva, saliva, if, if, if I'm slobbering, you got that too. So I kind of went all over the place with this topic. I pretty much went completely all over the place with this topic. I really did. And then what was another thing I wrote on here? Certain people have level-based thinking. Well, that can always go back to, um, you know, when we were talking about that particular 50 something, 60 something, 40 some year old person that's bashing a 19 year old or 20 some year old person that's that's going on a particular venture. And I'm not going to always say it's people those ages, because a lot of times people in their 50s, 60s, 70s and so on, they have compassion for the younger people to say, do what you want to do. There's plenty. We're not going to sit here and assume that anybody that's older 
has that type of thinking. There's several people that are older that think like that. That's almost 50%. It's almost 50-50. I'll tell you why it's almost 50-50. Half the time, you'll get people that say, just do you. Half the time. I've had a crazy old man. I had a, cra- I had a crazy man tell me, young person, li- li- love who you want to love and live how you want to live. He was talking about, oh, I'm just getting so sick and tired of these people. So he was talking about the black community. He's a black man himself. So he was talking about how, how the, the black community, they need to learn to respect each other and all that stuff. He was just getting crazy. And then the people on the bus were like, oh, you might want to get away from it. I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to sit here and listen to this. This is me having compassion for why why he's saying the stuff he said. I remember that. So, yes, there are, there are elders that, that'll tell you live how you want to live. Sometimes they fed up with certain people and, 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 and how they behave. They're fed up. They're fed up with certain people and how they behave. They're tired of it. So certain people have level based thinking. They want to level 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 up on top of each other. That could be friendship. That could be whatever. So that so when I say level based thinking, that pretty much goes back into the comers and the goers. The people that come into your life, why are they in your life? Sometimes it's happenstance. They just happen to be there. They just happen to be there. If you keep to yourself, if you keep to yourself and you don't have an exchange with anybody else, you can't say that they were put into your life for a purpose. The only people that seem like that are the ones that catch your eye. Everybody else is no offense. Sometimes, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say I'm not. I was about to say everybody else that's there, that's, that's a drama queen is they're just chaff. I'm sorry. That doesn't sound like a compassionate thing to say, but I hate to break it to your behaving as if we could just say that puts you in a just chaff category and we shouldn't be categorizing people. But like I said, there are times you may not always use compassion or empathy. Well, how do you empathize with drama queens? <laughs> how do you empathize with that? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I guess we could do that in our next video, right? How do you empathize with drama queens? You don't. I guess you just don't, you know, but spirituality is definitely pretty much why we did all these groups right so you got to find a particular group that likes what you like okay all these things this was in the previous video all these things lead to this because you're working together so it's easier if you have compassion for each other and treat that like like that's the world or do you want to call that empathy but they're new people that's coming in. So let's say you got a reading group or a create or better yet, creative writing group. In the writing group, you got writers that fight with each other saying, oh, you're not allowed to be a pantser. You're not allowed to be uh, this or that. So a pantser is the opposite of a person that uh, outlines a book. To be honest with you, I do both. Sometimes I'll outline. I'm t- typically, typically what I am is a pantser. So they call that what where 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 they get the term pantser from writing from the seat of your pants. You just you just write without outlining. That I, th- I think that I think that was the definition that they gave it. <laughs> writing from the seat of yeah. <laughs> a pantser. So yeah. There there there's an argument between pantsers and um I guess outliners. A pantser so so why am I mostly a pantser because I just have the idea in my head and I just get the writing. I don't want to waste time outlining. So I did my essays like that in high school and I just did the outline last and I still passed the test or should I say pass the grade, you know? Yeah. Still pass. and got a good grade on it. So that was that. <laughs> so technically in these groups, you would still have to utilize compassion for each other. So yeah, technically you could learn compassion just by joining these and you learn something from the other people. So however you want to see that empathy, compassion, that's up to you. I'll let you guys debate that amongst yourselves. But, uh, yeah, next time I'll try to organize this video a little bit better. This was all, I, th- I feel like this was all over the place, but we made a lot of sense. The comers and the goers, we were talking about relationships and the comers and the goers and how you don't lose anything. Although it will leave some people feeling disenchanted when you leave. I'm thinking why you didn't lose anything. So I'm gonna put the notes to the side because that pretty much covers most of what I want to talk about, but I want to add some more stuff to this. The comers and the goers in this life. 
they have level based thinking for several reasons. They want to measure, measure up to you. Uh, they want to use you. They, who knows? They want to level up because of you could be anything, could be any reason. And once again, that leads to this. So this video may be done soon. So we're just gonna have to make a new video. I have to do part four. So I'm gonna stop here. I guess at some point we'll just do the next part pretty much. Cause yeah. One thing I've noticed since I uploaded it from the phone, it uploads pretty fast. It uploads a lot faster than uh, when I do it on the uh, computer. So yeah. Anyway, it looks like we still got some time because uh, the video is still going, which is amazing. <laughs> video is still going. Uh, we were talking about how people just want to level up sometimes. They want to be better than somebody else. Well, um, we'll stop the video here and we'll, we'll, that'll be the next topic.